This episode of SciShow Kids is made in partnership with our friends at Soil Cycle. Hi everyone! I was just working in the fort's greenhouse, and Squeaks, I have some good news. The plants are doing really well. Pretty soon, we should be able to make a yummy salad out of the vegetables we're growing. Gardening can be a bit dirty, but it's worth it. As I was cleaning up, I started thinking that maybe we should take a closer look at the dirt our plants grow in. What we often think of as just dirt, especially when we have to clean up, is really interesting. Scientists would actually call the dirt in our gardens soil, and it's home to an incredible number of living things. Oh, that's right, Squeaks. We can see a few animals like earthworms when we're digging in the garden, and they're super important. They help the plants in our garden to get the air and food they need to grow. But there are other living things in the soil that we can't see with our eyes. We need tools like this microscope to see them. Let's give it a try. Howdy up there. I had a feeling I was being watched. Oh, hi. We didn't mean to startle you. I'm Jessie, and this is Squeaks. We're hoping to learn more about the kinds of living things in soil. Well, you sure have come to the right place. Name's Grady. Glad to meet you. I'm what's called a tardigrade. Some people like to call my family and I water bears or moss piglets. But we're our own little group of living things. Emphasis on the little. Most of us are only half a millimeter long, about the size of a period at the end of a sentence. So we tend to get overlooked a lot. Well, I'm sure glad we didn't overlook you. Would you mind telling us a little bit about your neighborhood? Well, it would be my pleasure. The soil I live in is a mixture of things like water, small pieces of rock, and air. It also has a lot of what we call organic matter. That's our fancy term for things that either were alive, like the remains of dead plants and animals, or are alive, like me. I'm one of billions of critters that can be found in a single spoonful of soil. Wow, that's a lot of living things in such a small space. There are about seven billion people, but they're living on the entire planet. And not only are there a lot of us in the soil, there's also a lot of different kinds of living things. We call the different living things in an area, it's biodiversity. The bio part of the word means living, and the word diversity means different things. And soil has a whole heap of biodiversity. There are more different kinds of living things beneath your feet in the soil than there are above the ground. That's amazing! What's even more amazing is how the living things in the soil and life above the soil are connected. Take the plants in your garden, for example. They are stuck in the ground by roots. And those roots also help them slurp up things they need, like water. But they also release stuff into the soil, like sugar. Microscopic living things, called bacteria, can use this sugar to grow. And in return, some kinds of bacteria release things that the plants need. Well, that's a win-win. And that's only one example. Other living things called fungi also work together with plant roots. Fungi is a science word for the group of living things that includes mushrooms. It's kind of like how we talk about plants or animals. There are actually millions of different kinds of fungi, including the ones we see growing out of rotten logs when we hike. or the tasty mushrooms we like to eat. Just talking about fungi makes me hungry for some yummy mushroom soup. Exactly! Though these fungi I'm talking about in the soil don't look like the ones you put on your plate. They grow in super thin strands that extend outward from a plant's roots. In fact, they kind of act like extra roots that help the plant pull things from the soil. It is kind of nice of them, isn't it? Of course, they benefit too. In return for helping out, the plant gives the fungi some of the food it makes and other useful things. It's a sweet little partnership. Though not all soil fungi and bacteria hitch themselves to roots, some get energy by breaking down the dead plants and animals I mentioned earlier. They're what we call 
decomposers. You can think of decomposers as the soil version of the workers that pick up the recycling in your neighborhood. Think about what would happen if no one was ever there to pick up recycling. Whew, it would pile up. And so would dead plants and animals if decomposers weren't around. I agree, Squeaks. That would be terrible. Decomposers sound super important. They sure are. They also matter because lots of soil-dwelling animals eat them. So, in addition to cleaning up our neighborhood, the decomposers that live in soil are an important source of food for critters like worms and, and tardigrades like me. Then, after we eat them, the waste we produce acts as a fertilizer, helping plants above the soil stay healthy. Wow! I didn't know that our garden owes so much to all the tiny things that live in the soil. Thanks, Grady. Don't mention it. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's supper time, and I had my eye on some tasty fungi. So y'all have a nice evening. Thanks, you too. Bye. Squeaks, how about we go ahead and put our soil back in the greenhouse, and then we can have our dinner too. Thanks for joining us at the fort. These episodes about soil are brought to you by our friends at Soil Cycle, a composting organization based in Missoula, Montana. They take part of the food you don't want to eat anymore and turn it into great soil that helps plants grow big and strong. They're really soil experts. If you want to learn more about soil, you can hit the subscribe button. We've got more soil adventures coming soon. Bye. <laughs>